Hey, a friend, Chris here from WhiteLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to video number 10, which is the final video in our Atmos series. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to export your Atmos masterpiece out of Logic Pro, both for number one, sharing with collaborators, friends, or clients that you wanna be able to check out your Atmos production, but number two, how to export the master ADM BWF file that you'll be using to upload to distribution for Apple Music or any other service that supports Atmos. So of course, before we dig into all of that, let's shout out our sponsor of the series for one last time, which is IK Multimedia. Now, again and again, I've said IK has been so supportive of this series and to support this series, they sent along on loan a set of their iLoud MTM immersive bundle of speakers. And you can see them right behind me. This bundle is fantastic. It is a bundle of 11 of the very popular iLoud MTM speakers from IK. And this bundle is awesome for anyone that wants to get into immersive or Atmos because number one, these speakers sound fantastic. Number two, these speakers are light and they're small and easy to mount on something as simple as a microphone stand, as you can see in my own studio. And number three, thanks to the built-in ARC technology, you can tune each speaker to your space. So what you're hearing from each speaker is something you know you can trust. So I'll include a link in the description below, as well as in this video, if you wanna check out more on IK's website all about the iLoud MTM Immersive Bundle. All right, today's video is gonna be cut and dry. First, I'm gonna show you how to bounce your Atmos project out of Logic Pro in a file format that your friend, collaborator, or client will be able to listen to on their end. Then second, I'll show you how to export the master ADM BWF file that you'll upload to distribute to Apple Music, Tidal, or any other service that supports Dolby Atmos. First, let's make sure that your track is loudness ready for distribution. I'm gonna recommend at a minimum that you have these two plugins on your master channel strip in your projects. To start, I recommend that you have a limiter loaded before the Dolby Atmos plugin. So as you can see, Logic offers a surround version of its limiter. And when we place the limiter before the Atmos plugin, this limiter will impact all non-3D object tracks that are part of the surround bed. Don't forget that 3D objects go straight to the Dolby Atmos plugin and skip all routing and processing that is between that channel strip and track and that Dolby Atmos plugin. You may wonder why we don't place the limiter after the Atmos plugin in a 7.1.4 channel count. And honestly, we could. And this limiter right here that was placed after the Atmos plugin would in fact process both our surround tracks and 3D object tracks. But the fact of the matter is, is that any plugin processing after the Atmos plugin will have no sonic influence or impact on the master ADM BWF file that you upload for distribution. So honestly, it's just pointless to process after the Atmos plugin. Plus any plugin processing you place after the Atmos plugin will surely not be applicable for all these different monitoring formats for listening to your Atmos mix. And second, at a bare minimum, I recommend that you load a loudness meter plugin after the Dolby Atmos plugin. So the limiter is in place to catch any potential peaks that may exceed or go above negative one dB. In the documentation from both Apple and Dolby, it's required that no peaks of your Atmos mix exceed negative one dB. So I recommend that you set the output level of the limiter before the Dolby Atmos plugin to negative one dB and be sure to set the mode to precision and set the true peak detection to on. These settings will ensure that even inner sample peaks will not exceed negative one. And then with our loudness meter after the Atmos plugin, you'll want to set the monitoring format in the Dolby Atmos plugin to 5.1. This is the Dolby recommended monitoring format for measuring the integrated loudness of your Atmos production. So you don't have to mix in 5.1, you just have to set the monitoring format to 51 when you're measuring the integrated loudness of your Atmos project. And then you set the playhead to the beginning of your project, press start on the loudness meter, and then press play and let your project play out from beginning to end. It's important to point out that this integrated value is based on a per song basis. So if you're mixing an album in Atmos, you don't play the entire album from beginning to end. You measure this value on a per song basis, starting from the beginning to the end of each individual song. Your goal when measuring the integrated loudness of your track is that on a per track basis, no track goes above or exceeds negative 18 LUFS or loudness units full scale. 
In fact, if your Atmos production goes above and exceeds negative 18 LUFs, it's very likely that Apple Music and other services will reject your Atmos mix. All right, so let's say you measure the integrated loudness of your project and let's say that your mix as a whole needs a boost or reduction in volume across the board. Now you could go ahead and select every channel strip and track in your session just by holding shift and clicking, then adjust faders for every channel strip in your project. But obviously details like automation can kind of throw a wrench in this blanket adjustment of level. Instead, I recommend that you assign just about every channel strip in the mixer to a voltage controlled amplifier or VCA fader for short. As you can see, I've done for most of the channel strips in my project. Any channel strips within a summing track stack, I instead just applied the VCA assignment to the track stack. And this includes all surround tracks as well as 3D objects. And since all of my send assignments are post fader or post pan, all my reverb and delay effect sends will be impacted as well even if I don't assign them to a VCA fader. VCA or voltage controlled amplifier is just a fancy term for a single fader that can adjust the relative volume of multiple tracks and channel strips at the same time. For example, if we listen to the first chorus, I set the Atmos plugin to the Dolby renderer. If we take a listen and a look as I adjust the VCA fader, Look at that. I adjusted the level of every single track in my project from one fader. So if you're struggling to get your Atmos mix to sit at or below that negative 18 LUFS value on the loudness meter, you can assign the various tracks and channel strips in your Atmos project to a VCA fader. From there, you can refine the level of your entire project in one go. Okay, so we have a limiter in place to catch any peaks and you've measured the integrated loudness of your Atmos project in a 5.1 monitoring format and you're not going above negative 18 LUFs on the loudness meter. To share with a friend or client, you're gonna to wanna to do the following. First, let's assume your friend, collaborator, or client does not have the audio interface or speaker count or renderer to be able to listen to an ADM BWF master file. So your best bet is to set the monitoring format in the Dolby Atmos plugin to the Dolby renderer or the Apple renderer, or even both if you wanna provide two different perspectives of this Atmos mix for that collaborator. So let's choose the Dolby renderer. And from here, I'll select all the regions in my project and use Command and U to set the cycle range. And now let's go up to File, down to Bounce, Project or Section. As you may have guessed, we're going to bounce the Dolby rendered or Apple Spatial Audio rendered version of our Atmos mix so our friend, collaborator, client can listen to this Atmos project in a pair of headphones. So you wanna make sure to enable PCM for the destination. Then I choose a file format of WAV. And personally, I would set the resolution to 32 bit. That way you don't have to apply any dither to your bounce. And I'd leave the sample rate set to the project sample rate. So in this case it would be 44.1 and then click okay. I'll apply this to the desktop and we'll call this Atmos bounce. Once this bounces, we'll take a listen to the resulting WAV file. All right, let's take a look at the finder on the desktop. And let's take a listen to see if this file actually plays back as the binaural rendered version. Right, so that sounds like the mix that I'm familiar with through the binaural renderer. Now, when it comes time to export your Atmos production for uploading to streaming platforms like Apple Music and Tidal, in that case, we're gonna have to generate an ADM BWF master file. To do that, let's go up to file and go down to export. And under export, we're gonna select project 
as ADM BWF. From here, we get the export dialog, and this master file that we're going to generate is going to contain the surround bed, plus all the individual mono and stereo 3D objects and the metadata that is required to reproduce your Atmos mix for any Atmos capable device. Okay, let's click save. The resulting ADM BWF master file is going to be quite large in size and it can take quite a while to export. So I'm going to fast forward and import the resulting master file into a brand new Logic Pro project. All right, the export has now been completed. And if we go to the finder, take a look at this master file that's been generated, take a look at the file size. 942.9 megabytes as compared to the stereo bounce that we created, which was only 88.3 megabytes. To make sure this master file indeed includes everything related to the surround bed and 3D object tracks, let's import it into a new logic project. To do that, let's go up to file, down to import, and let's select create project from ADM BWF. Select the master file and then click on open. All right, if we zoom out, we can see a track and channel strip for our surround bed, as well as the left and right hand signals for all of our 3D objects. The Atmos plugin has been loaded on a master channel strip. I'll set this to the Dolby renderer. And now we can take a listen and a look to our Atmos project. And there you go, the surround bed. Plus the 3D objects. And if we press A to view our automation, we can see the objects positioning from left to right, back to front, elevation and object size for each signal of our 3D objects. And this is how Atmos capable devices will be able to play back your Atmos production in all of its glory, regardless of how many speakers are actually involved on that device. I do hope this Atmos series on WideLogic Pro Rules has helped to remove some of the mystery when it comes to getting started with Atmos and immersive audio. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.